Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan and in today's video we'll have a look at creating a realistic muzzle flash in Blender using Mentaflow. Previous videos mostly showed how to create muzzle flashes by modeling or procedurally generating them with nodes, but today we'll go ahead and actually simulate one. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get straight into the video. So for this video I'm using the latest build of Blender 2.9 because with the setup we'll use today I didn't manage to get the result I wanted with the current LTS release and in Blender 2.91 Mentaflow often crashes. So to start up we'll import a simple gun model. This is just for rendering purposes. I am using a simple pistol model by 3D Model Haven. So there it is, but right now this model uses a silencer which isn't that realistic because silencer also suppress muzzle flashes. So let's select the silencer with L and delete all the faces. Now we only have the gun left. You can see the origin is right now at this point and we can simply search for set origin to geometry. And now let's center the model. Simulations tend to work better in real world scale. And the pistol is about 15, 15 centimeters in length. So let's measure 15 centimeters, which is about that. And let's scale down our model so it fits. So this is about the size we want. Let's again center it and we are ready to start setting up our simulation. You can also see in the material preview mode that the textures have been loaded correctly. Now let's firstly start by setting up our emitter. As an emitter we'll use a small circle, so let's add that and rotate it 90 degrees on the y-axis. Now let's scale it down so it fits inside our barrel and let's position it correctly. This circle will later emit our fire and we'll use a simple bullet model to push it outwards. Now we still have to align it on the x-axis, so let's go into wireframe mode and let's place it right around there. This way we can use the gun to suppress the fire from going upwards and the bullet model to shoot the fire outwards in x direction. The circle still doesn't have any geometry, so let's go into edit mode and press F to fill it with a face. Now for the bullet model let's add in a cylinder, scale it way down and again position it correctly. We also have to rotate it by 90 degrees on the y axis and now it is also in the correct position. To give it a simple bullet shape we can just take these vertices and extrude them and now scale them down as well as bevel them to make the tip a bit rounded. Ok, of course we have to animate it and because this bullet has to travel really fast we'll only give it about two or three frames to travel maybe this distance. So let's set an allocation keyframe and this is looking pretty good. I can now also set the end frame to about frame 20 because we don't need that many frames to simulate our muzzle flash. Next up let's select our circle and search for quick smoke. This will add in a domain which is way too big so let's press Alt G and Alt S to reset all its parameters and scale it down and move it to where the muzzle flash will happen. So about this size will do the trick. Now you can see because we haven't saved our blend file, the cache folder is a temporary one. So let's save our blend file and now we can use slash slash cache for example. And you can see also the cache has reloaded. Now I don't really like the replay type, so I will set it to modular and also check is resumable. Now we have to set up our collision objects, which is for one our gun. So let's select it, press on fluid and choose effector and the bullet. So also do the same thing. Now because this bullet moves so fast, I will give every object some sampling substeps. This just divides every frame into subframes that allows the smoke solver to get a more accurate representation of the motion path of the bullet. And out of habit I always set the substeps to 24. But if this doesn't work for you, you can of course always up this number or lower it. For the emitter, I will use either fire or fire plus smoke, but because we will not render smoke, I will only use fire. Also, set the sampling subsets to 24. Now, because I only want the fire to be emitted when the muzzle flash is actually happening, I will go to about frame 3, keyframe the use flow value and turn it off one frame after and under flow source also set it to is planar because we are only using a planar surface. I will also check adaptive domain just because we don't have to simulate everything else and with a resolution of 128 I will do a quick test bake. 
Okay, the bake is finished and you can see that this is working correctly. But in the viewport we can't really see our simulation because it looks very thin. So let's give it a material. Let's quickly go into cycles and let's open a new window. And with the domain selected, I will firstly set the density to zero and turn up the black body intensity for 10, just for testing purposes. And we can see that this works correctly and exactly how I wanted it to be. For etta shading, we can always use different attributes. For example, heat or flame. So let's connect flame to the black body intensity, add in a math node, set it to multiply and multiply it by a lot. You can see that it gives us this shading and with heat it looks like this. Now this isn't very different from each other, but I like to use heat for muzzle flashes just because in different scenes I had better results using this attribute. Now I will also turn up the temperature to maybe 1500 so it looks a bit brighter. Now we of course have to bake in some noise just so our muzzle flash looks a bit more high res. So let's select the smoke domain and check noise. For the thumbnail I use an up res factor of 6 I think. For this tutorial I will use 2 and I used a strength of 0.5 for the noise. This way it is not too noisy, but the noise still adds some details. And now we get this look. You can of course always change the look by adjusting the resolution divisions. Right now I used a pretty high number for such a small scale simulation, but 128 just gave me the best results. You can of course set it lower and maybe this will work for you. And because Blender saves simulation files with the OpenVDB format, we can actually also import already simulated muzzle flashes in different scenes, which is great, because now we don't have to simulate these all over again. This is about it. This is how we can easily simulate muzzle flashes using Mantaflow. If you found this tutorial helpful, consider liking and subscribing, and we will see us in the next video next Saturday.